Hello, 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 and welcome hello. to the Recap. Hi, everybody. My name is Aaliyah Skye, and I am filling in for our host, Alex Ringler, who is out working, doing the theater, all that fun stuff. So we are just going to dive right on in. So let's go ahead and start. Um, let's everybody introduce ourselves on the panel. Tell us who you are, where you're calling from, and when is the last time you have seen a magic show? Let's start with Russ White. Hi, I'm Russ White, Q Life uh, co founder, co publisher, and co founder of the International Drag Queen Database, calling in live from Las Vegas, Nevada. And the last time I saw a magic show was last week. I saw oh. Naked Magicians here in Las Vegas. Ooh, were they actually naked? Um, there's laws in, in Las Vegas still, but uh, yeah, there was, there was definitely butt cheeks and abs. Oh, okay. All right. I'll take the illusion. All right. Let's move it on over to Mr. Garrett. Garrett, how are you today? Hi, everyone. I'm doing great. Thank you, Aaliyah. I am also calling in from Las Vegas, home to magic shows. There are more magic shows here than there are churches in the Bible Belt. Um, and yeah, magic, we went both together along with Andrew. We went and saw the Naked Magicians, and it was so much fun. And they're so hot, super gay friendly. They do one act where they have a straight jacket. And they have a gay jacket. A gay jacket is like sparkly and rainbow. Super <laughs> fun. And um, yeah, I've seen wait, and I'm getting tired of drag shows, but I do want Nina to come, like, to come and open up a drag magic show here in Vegas. That would be amazing. That sounds like it'd be really fun. Well, since y'all three all went together, why don't we go ahead and jump over to Andrew? Andrew, introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Andrew Lignelli. I am the Director of Development for the International Drag Queen Database. Um, and like uh, Russ and Garrett, I went to the Naked Magicians. Um, and unlike them, I got a dick pic of one of the magicians. Show us the picture! Show us the picture! Girl, this is a family <coughs> friendly show, girl. You can show us after we're done filming. And you all later. <laughs> and then that actually wraps it up for all the Vegas queens. So we're going to move on over to New York City. Starting with the fabulous Michael. Michael, tell us who you are. I'm Michael Barbieri. I am a dining and entertainment writer and the creator of Dragtastic. And uh, the, uh, yes, calling in from gray, dreary New York, New York City. And um, wow, I can't remember the last time I saw a magic show. It might have been the musical, The Magic Show on Broadway. With How long Doug ago? Henning. How long ago was that, girl? <laughs> uh, 70s. Oh, okay. So she's been a hot minute. <laughs> right. Last but not least, we have is that Silky Nutmeg back again? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It is the fabulous Walter. Walter, introduce yourself. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm living the dream. Best day of my life. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Walter Kurtz, the dreaded and feared Walter Kurtz, coming to you live from Donkey Mirror, home of the chandelier. And for those of you who are wondering why I'm wearing a face kini or a whatever you want to call this, I had to uh, shave off my uh, facial hair for a TV role, and I'm not letting people see me until my facial hair has grown back. So I wear this on the street, and everybody thinks I'm a burn victim. Everybody all don't your mouth through that hole. You robbed a bank and this filming just interrupted your escape. Let's be honest. You know we're going to see the show, right? <laughs> and then, of course, yeah. last but not least, we have myself, Miss Aaliyah Sky. I am a drag queen and fashion designer extraordinaire, and I am calling in from Los Angeles, California. And last time I saw a magic show was, ironically, when I lived in Vegas. So you're absolutely right. Vegas is the home of all things magic. Let's hope Miss Nina West gets down there. I would buy tickets to that show. So on this week's episode, was anyone gagged this week? Let's just start with that. Was anyone else gagged? I was gagging. No, but one. Okay, one person. All right. Oh, oh, me. Oh, <laughs> so um, at the start of our episode, we had all the queens return back to the workroom. And the first thing that I actually noticed was um, there's been a slight shift in Brooklyn's kind of attitude. And there's been more than one occasion where her and Nina have worked together and Nina has felt some sort of a way. So I just wanted to start and ask everybody how you felt about Brooklyn A kind of acknowledging that she was put into that position by Nina, but it, it took the judges to say something first. And then you never hear Brooklyn acknowledge the fact that Nina put her in a spot or sacrificed a role that she wanted to do to make Brooklyn feel good. So 
my question is, is really in the, in the game of drag, is it smarter to, to step away from a role that you'd rather have like Nina did to help your teammate? Or should Nina have taken the role that she wanted to and then played it out the way that she wanted to? What are our thoughts? Let's start with Andrew. Um, I, in terms of swapping parts, I don't think Nina should have. You know, she, she wants to win. She needs to do the best she can at every moment or she could go home. Um, in terms of Brooklyn not acknowledging it on the runway, that I agree with. I mean, in front of the judges, you don't want to say that you, you know, got a helping hand. You want to look the best you can, kind of in the same vein. Um, however, Brooklyn should have, I, in my opinion, um, thanks Nina afterwards when they're back in the workroom. So, by the way, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, you helped me get where I was. Um, and she didn't do that. And that was kind of my opinion, Shady. Girl, Slady, backhanded. Michael, what do you think about them? Yeah, she absolutely should have acknowledged her and thanked her in, in the workroom. Um, and in terms of, if they had been, if they had switched the roles, if Nina had been the naked sunbather, it would have been funny. It might not have turned out the same way, but the thing is, the two of them were so good it, it, you know, they, they might have won anyway. I would agree. I would agree with that. I mean, I, I personally think it's not harmful to help the other queen. If you're strategic, we saw like Bianca Del Rio in her season. She helped a lot of the other girls. And she yep. still came out the winner. And really, at the end of the day, it's about like what you see as an audience. I think that's what really represents like a winner for a queen. <laughs> so to me, like it rubbed me wrong a little bit with Brooklyn not making her. Yeah. Uh, let's get one more opinion on that. Let's jump over to Ski Mask Walter. Walter, what do you think about that? Well, I thought, yeah, it's ungracious of anyone not to give people credit. And I actually think it would have been fine for her to say it on the uh, runway, particularly since she knew that she'd knocked it out of the park and she was safe and all of that. And, you know, people can give you an opportunity and you can also fall on your face. So, yes, Nina gave her the opportunity, but she took it and ran with it, and uh, she should be commended for that. And by saying that Nina did me a favor doesn't diminish the fact that she did well. It just, it's a win-win situation. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I did great, but I couldn't have done it without somebody else. Yeah, it was ungracious. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, so that wrapped it up for last week, essentially. So we jump into our, our mini challenge this week, which we see, I think for the first time this whole season, the entire pit crew come walking into the workroom. Oh, uh, pit crew. Oh, pit crew. Girl, now, I don't know if it's just me, but I have noticed that I don't see as much of the pit crew as we used to. I kind of miss the skimpy, scandalous underwear and bulges, but we are on VH1. I don't know if it's like a censorship thing. Um, but then we also see Delta Work come into the workroom. And this is the first time in a Drag Race history that I've seen so many alumni cameos. So how do we feel about seeing so many returning queens bounce back? Is it necessary that they're even there? Is it refreshing to see an alumni queen? What are our thoughts about that? Let's jump over to Garrett. I think, yeah, we've, we've talked about how this season they did say that they would be expecting to bring back all the queens from past seasons. and. Yeah, I still feel the same way that it's good to see old faces, just like it's good to see old friends, you know? Like all of you. Love seeing all my old friends. Oh, we love seeing you too. So it's fun. And I sometimes, I'm, I like didn't recognize Delta when she first walked in though, but Andrew right away was like, oh my God, that's Delta. And I was like, oh. no, everybody. I swear, I would not recognize some of the queens walking down the street. They just look different, but it's good to see that she looks great. Good. Well, so that's cute for the cameos, but I really want to know more about the pit crew. So I'm going to ask my thirsty friend, Mr. Russ White, over here. <laughs> Russ. I don't know if I'm pointing at you on our screen right now. I, is it up? Yeah. Right. Mr. Russ, how do you feel about seeing all the, the scandalously dressed men walking into the room? You're, oh, you're, you're muted, muted, girl. Russ. I don't mind having the full cast of the cr full pit crew on screen at any one time. And I think I would have loved to participate in this challenge. <laughs> Girl, who wouldn't? So the, the name of the, the mini challenge was the balls to the walls where all the girls got paired up. It was kind of like a twister style, one body part to the other. And the girls have to carry a ball across the room. Who else besides Russ? Who would have had? Who else would have had a lot of fun doing that with the pit crew? Because I know I would have. 
my partner would have been probably upset, but girl. I, and I loved Silky. The look on Rue's face when Silky just picked that boy up. <laughs> girl, she she was like, I got this. Yeah. I got it. Like, I know how to do that. I can win this one. <laughs> I, I wonder, Michael, how would you, would you have, how would you, girl, would you have flooded your basement if they had asked you to put your chin to the nuts and carry the balls? Oh, I would have been there in a hot second. Yeah, I you do would. have a weird, I do have a weird little theory, though, as to why they aren't using the crew as much. I just think that so much of the attention now is on the queens because the show has, I mean, because it's it, the the queens are so big now, you know, uh, they're 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 such a selling point. It's a little bit like on Project Runway when they used to have a, the models much more involved, but then mm -hmm. they stopped doing that because they realized no one really gave a shit about the models. It's about the designers. So I think it's a little bit that way with the pit crew too. Okay, I could. They want to focus on the queens. I mean, I personally do miss myself another bulge or two on television more often, but... Oh, please, yeah. I mean, girl... Bring I can back the dick. I, I, I Bring think back partially the dick. Right. What was that? Bring back the dick. Bring back the dick. <laughs> girl, the dick never left. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, obviously, our winner this week on the mini challenge was Miss Vanjie. She managed to drop the most balls in her bucket. So, good for you, Miss Vanjie. You seem experienced, so I wasn't really that surprised. Um, but Miss Vanjie did get to pick her team. Now, normally in a challenge like this, you have two winners, and then they pick girls one at a time, right? This week, it was a little bit different. They basically gave Miss Vanjie her top four picks out of all the girls, and then the remainder were left. So, Miss Vanjie's strategy was, of course, to pick all the big personalities, because it is a like a magic show and you want a big personality but do we feel that she shot herself in the foot by picking so many big personalities and it never dawned on her that the girls that she left behind were much more skilled at a challenge like this was it a mistake for her not to pick nina or someone right off the bat um let's start with walter what do you think um no i don't really think it was a mistake on her part because she how would she know that uh, they would just be a big mess and not be able to come to an agreement and all of that. It's, it's kind of uh, unknowable. I think no matter how that would have grouped out, as long as you had two big personalities together in any group, I think it would have been a little bit of a mess because you would have had that conflict and all. So, I mean, yes, you picked the, the biggest people, which is probably what I would have done, but I wouldn't have expected them to be such a mess. So. Okay, fair enough. Maybe too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. Something yeah. to that effect. Um, Andrew, what do you think? If you were in Miss Vanjie's position, how would you have picked the girls? I hear you. Now yeah. she's silent. We are having audio issues Some today. Technical difficulties. You hear me? Yeah, yes. there you are. Um, I wouldn't have necessarily picked the biggest personalities. I would have picked the funniest personalities. At the end of the day, if you make Rue laugh, you're going to be golden. And Nina is <laughs> Be one of the funniest ones there. It's so, you know, a good point. Or yeah. you can sell it. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't pick Nina first. I mean, that would have been my personal first pick on there. Um, Garrett, how about you? What do you? Well, actually, Michael, you're about to say something. What were you going to say, girl? On any reality competition, when you get a big group of people together that all have big personalities, there's always that clashing. Always where some people want to do it this way, some people want to do it that way, and they never end up meshing. But isn't that what we watch? Because we want to see that drama. We want to see that kind of clash. Of well, yeah, but, it, but the thing is, it doesn't work in terms of their competition, their game. This is true. I mean, I personally thought the, the order, like the pecking order was a bit bizarre. Listen, no, like, no. if I were the leader of a team, and my teammates were like not interested, I'd be like a little more forceful in like, no, I don't care like what you think. This is my team. Like, I mean, I do care what you think, but there are certain things that I cannot budge on. I'm not going to just be like winging it up there. Like you knowing- You have to take a leadership position. Yeah, yeah, like didn't they all get in trouble at one point in time for nobody stepping up and like really saying what needed to be said and really pushing the yeah. issue? All right? So it's like, learn your lesson. If there's something that needs to be said and something that needs to be done, you have to do it. Like, you have to. Or else it, 
you know, because you get thrown under the bus as the leader. I mean, Vanjie said something in this episode that really kind of threw me where she said that she was playing like people pleaser. She was trying to please everyone in her group. And I think as a fan of the show, you've seen multiple times throughout previous seasons that you just can't. That's a, just a life lesson in general. You can't make everybody happy. You know, the people that aren't happy, just they're just not going to be happy. But you have to still play the leadership role and make an executive decision. And I personally think she kind of failed at it, which is the downfall of that team. So, so we get to the actual challenge itself. And we have the Mighty Tucks, who were the three girls, not pigs. And then we have Black Magic. The team that floundered. So, what did we think about? Um, I'm going to start with the Mighty Tux because, girl, I thought the funniest. I thought Michelle yeah. was absolutely right when she said hysterical. I died laughing so many times. Did we have a favorite magic trick or a favorite bit from each of the teams? Um, Russ, let's go to you. What did you think about the challenge this week? I think this was probably one of the most unique challenges ever done. Um, I loved it from start to finish. Uh, <coughs> the tucks were clearly the best, but what I found fascinating was that this was one of the, the uh, challenges where they brought in someone to teach the queens how to do something they've never done before, and every one mastered their their trick there wasn't a bust trick in the bunch um and so i thought that was quite amazing um the best trick at the was the the closing where uh nina was doing her bottle trick and it was bottle bottle and i'm just that wasn't in the, the previews it was bottle 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 shot and it was just perfectly executed I mean, she absolutely knew how to play that bit up. So I thought she did such a well. I loved every time her face. She was like, it's magic every time. Magic. Yeah, so much fun. Very Mom fun. She knows quite a bit about busted tricks, let me tell you. And, Girl, and when, you when, when you know quite a few about <laughs> busted tricks. And when you can get Michelle Visage to mimic you in the closing, you, you've won. Oh, they were filling the fantasy. You know, yeah. if you would have been there, you would have been just filling the spirit with them right along. Um, let's jump over to Walter because someone is, who's normally a bit more, let's say, just, we'll say skeptical. <laughs> um, what, what are your opinions about this week's challenge? How did you feel it all turned out? <clears throat> I thought it was fun. I thought it was really fun. I thought that the people who won were the ones who should have won. I thought that the black magic were like so many of the characters who were in it, frenetic, over yeah. the top, scattered, <laughs> floundering, just flailing around. It was just a mess. It was a mess. The whole situation was, their whole team was. Yeah, I, w w one, one thing I thought was interesting was that, sorry, can't see anything. Um, was that Brooklyn's trick change. She was supposed to be doing something with that card which she seemed to do perfectly fine, and she ended up with a bubble as her trick, which we didn't see in the rehearsals and all. But um, no, I thought the black magic was a mess. And I thought, yeah, I thought it was fun. And uh, Nina West has given a new catchphrase for the TV show with magic. So good for her. She's uh, got a meme. Know, there's a meme out there somewhere already. There yeah. Oh, I gotta go make a meme now. <laughs> Girl, get right on that as soon as we're yeah. done. Um, so Walter kind of brought up a good point in the fact that Black Magic was obviously a hot mess, um, which did lead to a little bit of drama in the sense that half of the girls on that team wanted to improv, um, half of the team wanted to have a bit more structured bit. Now, obviously, the Mighty Tucks had a way more structured bit. Like you just said, Walter, they didn't do the card trick for Brooklyn. I think they tossed it out the window knowing that she wasn't a fan of that trick. I think they were smart and strategic in getting rid of that and replacing it with something that could lead into their next trick. Where Black Magic, you could even see when Evie was was presenting a trick and Akira like responded to something and it threw her off. You could just tell that it was not rehearsed. Um, how do we feel about, do we think a structured situation for something like that is more preferred? Or do we feel like someone coming off of a um, an improv win, like a Curia, thinking maybe that's what's going to carry her through this challenge. Do we think that it was smarter 
just as a whole to be more structured or is it better to leave a little room for improv? Andrew, what do you think? I think when you have that many people in a group, you need structure. If you're all trying to wing it off the cuff, there's too many of you throwing out things here and there, and you're gonna cut each other off and it's going to be awkward. Um, improv is good if there's one or two or selected segments where it's your turn to do your thing. But when you're all up on stage doing it together, it just makes a train wreck. Agreed. I mean, we watched it all happen live. Um, every, yeah. Every good improv show has a set of at least like an outline. So you have to hit this point. There has to be a transition point. And so the in-between can be filled. There has to at least be a structure of a storyline, main points to hit, transition, opening, transitions, closing, right? And so without any of it, and maybe that is where Vanjie was right in, okay, it doesn't have to be a complete script, but there does need to be something in place. So we're all in agreement that this is where we're going and that playing that middle, that middle ground. And obviously that was their, clearly their downfall was the fact that they couldn't find that happy balance between the two. So obviously the Black Magic um, was the worst team. A comment was said on the show where they were like, oh, we were good, but y'all were better. I personally thought there was only one good team this, this episode, unfortunately, because there are talented girls on both sides. Um, however, it was just a hot mess. So girl, cut now to the runway which um, the theme this season or this episode for the runway was caftans. So girl, we ain't got no caftans here either. What is that about? Um, I really enjoyed the, the runway this episode personally. I'm not, I've never worn a caftan in drag. I've worn a kimono, but never a caftan. So what did we think about all the girls looks this week? Let's start with, let's go to, let's actually start with Garrett on this one. What did you think friend? Um, I was living for um, the judge, uh, Ross Matthews. His comments <laughs> were even better than the outfits to me. He was like, this is what I want to be seen in. And sometimes I was like, you know what? It takes like a strong personality to really wear one of those out. And when you think about who actually wears those, it's always somebody like super high fashion, super great. And I think that the queens looked great. Um, I actually really liked the three reveal that happened with um sugar yeah sugar sugar and i yeah so it was cool i i thought this whole week unique what i like about it is that they've done stuff they've never done before and so it was nice to see some refreshing things now let me ask you this garrett was there any queen apart from a, a curia who you did not like per caftan was there any caftan you did not care for um, well, the one that was the butterfly wings wasn't a caftan, so I'd say caftan it was not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I just think also, too, that that could have been a funny way, like a meme, right? That this is how butterflies should be on the show, <laughs> not the way the that butterflies should not be on this show. <laughs> Girl, last week we had a roach, this week we had a butterfly. Girl, the insects are in full force. Although, I... <laughs> If she could have done the butterfly as a caftan, if right. she knew what a caftan was. Right. You know? And it would have been a really cool caftan. It was a half tan. It was a half tan. <laughs> Girl, not the half tan. Hashtag half tan. Um, let's jump over to somebody who actually, I think, has a really keen eye. Every episode, he always has good points. Michael, what did you think about the runway this week? I, in general, I liked it. Um, uh, I really liked Silky's uh, look. I loved the caftan itself, and I loved the hair, the three balls. That was cool. Um, I loved Evie's gold hair, the gold glitter hair. That was fabulous. And it, and it complemented the caftan, or the caftan complemented the hair. Um, the only, the only uh, I mean, obviously, other than the butterfly, which wasn't a caftan, the only um, caftan I really didn't care for was Sugar's original one. I, it just, it looked heavy and, and wintry, and it didn't sort of, it didn't feel like it flowed with the rest of them. And it made I, her lip sync look awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. It was definitely really heavy. I have to agree with Garrett. I personally actually liked the three reveals. It, I was, it was surprising. It was refreshing. I mean, I'm used to one, but to see 
I think I think Nina looked the best she's ever looked. Absolutely. That uh, the hair, the makeup, the caftan, it was all perfect. I mean, she really has stepped up her game from the start yeah. of the season where she was so shaky and unsure of herself. I have to say, her looks have been consistent. They've not always been at the very, very top, in my opinion. But I think the last several weeks, she's doing what most queens should do on that show, which is you have a nice, slow, steady burn to start. And then once you get to about halfway through that competition is when it's time to really, like, elevate and start rising to the occasion. And I think she's doing that. So yeah, good on her. And, uh, and Andrew, though though I love though I love Brooklyn a lot, I'm gonna start calling her Brook Tox because she looked so much like Detox. She, she, every week she comes out and looks a lot like Detox. The makeup, I mean, she looked beautiful, but she looked like Detox. She looks like Detox and Pandora Box had a baby, <laughs> and boom, Brooklyn Heights is born. Um, I actually do want to get Andrew's opinion on this because I do know that Andrew really enjoys the runways and this week he wasn't robbed of big giant wigs. So, Andrew, <laughs> what did you feel about the looks this week? Um, ironically, Evie's was my favorite, the one without a big giant wig. Um, but her calf can was just the most original to me. Um, they were all beautiful, but hers wasn't like anything I've seen before. Um, and I did, like everyone else, I love Sugar's reveals. Um, I agree the first calf can was my least favorite, so kind of the opposite of what the judges felt. Um, but they all did good, except for Kyria, who didn't have a calf tan. Um, in my opinion, if you're not going to wear what you're supposed to wear, you're in the bottom. Like, you literally didn't do the challenge. You shouldn't be safe for that. So I was a little upset to see if Kyria wasn't put in the bottom for that, especially since her team did so poorly. Well, and then Plastique last week was red for filth for not following the challenge, and she was thrown into the bottom. Right. So... To kind of have that as a miss and have sugar thrown in definitely threw me off. Um, did anybody else have any opinions about the runway? I think we all kind of agreed. Akira was, what the hell? Right, and Nina yeah. was definitely like, <laughs> beautiful. Um, I thought Brooklyn's was cute, but girl, anybody can just throw a sheet of chiffon over their shoulder with a gold bra and bikini. So I'm still not 100% impressed, but I think she does bring you fashion. So good on you, girl. So we get to our tops and our bottoms. Now, do we agree with the tops and the bottoms this week? I personally don't, but I want to hear your opinions. Let's jump over to Walter. Walter, what are your opinions about the tops and the bottoms this week? Uh, no, I don't agree with it. Uh, I, I got the feeling from the very beginning of the episode that the long knives were out for Suga and she was going to be toast because she was talking, she was a talking head too much at the beginning of the show. And I think the producers just have no use for her anymore. Uh, I don't think she deserved to be in the bottom. Yes, the other two queens were bigger than she was, but she certainly didn't face plant. She held her own and all of that. Uh, the people who should have been in the bottom in my book should have been, um, it's kind of torn. I agree with Andrew. If you don't do the, uh, challenge then if you don't do the runway you really should sort of be in the bottom the bottom three were akiria evie and uh um, vanji vanji an absolute the other two it's kind of a toss-up but the producers weren't going to do that they, they were ready to send sugar home sugar yeah. was yeah it, 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 it was, was a strategic save yeah it it was blatant producing yeah yeah um, i would agree and um, so let's get um, let's get let's get Garrett's opinion. What, what did you think about tops and bottoms? Yeah, uh, I just I was like really kind of like no way. And yeah, you could tell from the foreshadowing as the show was going on that they had made those comments. Like sometimes, even though you're on the winning team, I'm like never before that I can remember oh. have someone on the winning team where everybody did really great. They put somebody in the bottom when the other team was just such a train wreck and like also didn't do the look on the runway. So are we getting to a place in the show where the big personalities and airtime and like things that are more important than the actual competition? Is that where we're headed? And like, why? Like, no, I think everyone that watched that show is thinking the same thing. So if you are going to do it and you are going to make somebody go home, I think it needs to be a little less obvious. Like, it was very obvious to me. But it's, it also, uh, it, it is instructive for people who want to be on the show that if you want to stay on the show, 
you can never do anything less than stellar because if you don't have a storyline, you're going home. But if you do such an incredible job, there's no way they can put you in the bottom. And so it's, 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 it's a ripoff. It's, it's awful. I mean, it's, it's definitely television. It's produced. It's stage TV, you know. Andrew, what are your thoughts? Look like you're about to say something. Uh, what Garrett was saying, though, with the personalities outshining, I think Sugar has a bigger personality than Akira. And I love Akira. Yeah. She didn't do well in this challenge, but when it comes to personalities, Sugar has that down. So for them to say, you can Akira because her personality is better, no, it's not. It just isn't. I mean, oh, I was oh, oh. Like, yeah. Oh, I have to say one other thing, sorry, that was important. Yeah. I, I am so sick of them saying to Vanji, you know, Vanji, you just do yourself every week. We need to see something different. We just see you. We just see you. Oh, and Silky, oh, you are so funny every week. Yeah, she's doing Silky every week. That's, that is uh, praised. Vanji does the same thing, and Vanji's doing a mistake. They don't even detect the hypocrisy of what they're saying. Because, I mean, talk about a one note. It's Silky. I mean, I think we see this, though, every season, to be completely honest. I think, at the end of the day, yes, Andrew's right. I thought Sugar definitely had more personality, but I thought Akira was more consistent. I think it is kind of a weird balancing act, especially when you're judging or producing a show like this, because you do find yourself contradicting previous verdicts and previous opinions about other girls. We saw in All Stars, what was it, All Stars 3, where Fifi got, like, gooped with Alyssa sitting there behind that mirror, right? But she had even said it herself, like, they let Alyssa get away with anything because she's Alyssa. And Alyssa's personality is really what played to her her strength, regardless of how she really was doing in the competition. And I think we are seeing that here with, with Silky, because you could easily say last week with Silky not painting and really sticking to the runway challenge, yet she was still safe. And then you see someone like Sugar Kane this week who was on the winning team, who didn't have any issues. I personally, I mean, we all liked her her reveals and her caftan, yet it was clearly not the favorite of the judges. So, I don't know. I think it's a kind of a fine line that the producers and the, the judges have to kind of walk in order to keep the show progressing and keep those story arcs going. And at the end of the day, Walter, I think you are right. I think it's about your storyline. Does your storyline come to a close because Sugar Kane's had, and that's why she went home? You know, had she had beef with another girl, maybe they would have kept her longer. Had she, you know, been more strategic in the way that she did her thing. But unfortunately, she didn't, and she went home for it. Now, let's kind of, I do want to talk about the lip sync itself, though, because I, I actually kind of enjoyed it. I thought Vanjie really did try. She was doing that thing, though, that I hate, where queens start ripping off things. I know it's part of the, the song. At least it wasn't her wig. Um... But I thought Sugar Cane held her own as well with it. I thought the caftan was awkward, but I thought she held her own too. I thought they were very equal on par. So, Michael, what did you think about the actual lip sync? Uh, I, I knew that it couldn't be because they had already done a double save, but I thought they both did well enough that it could have been a double save had that not already happened. They both lip synced beautifully. They're, you know, they were, they were doing the, the, the lip sync work very, very well. Um, but ultimately, I think, um, in terms of the acting and the energy, I think Vanjie owned it. She portrayed, like, more emotion. I thought Vanjie was messy. Really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. By the time full time, yeah, her hair and everything, she looked like she just woke up. Uh, <laughs> How do y'all feel about, now, now, I as a drag queen, because I know none of y'all, like, really perform, like, like I will, you know. So from an audience point of view, how do you feel about seeing queens that start ripping off their costumes and ripping off pieces of their looks and whatnot? I mean, granted, she kept her wig on, so good on her. It, de wanna, it depends. I don't want to see boy nipple. I don't want to see your boy nipple. Like, it really yeah. 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 Like, Vanjie nice had a boy nipple. Tape just right there. Yeah. Miss Vanjie. Right. It, every, everything, every, it has to be organic to what they're doing. It has to be there has to be a motivation behind what they're doing. Yeah, there are general rules. You generally don't take off your wig. You don't show your boy nipple, all that sort of stuff. But some rules can be broken if it's interesting and it's executed well. The problem I had with Vanji was, and this is the second time we've seen her lip sync, is she's a big pointer. She's constantly pointing while she's lip syncing. It's a default 
thing that she has, and it's pointless. Don't look at my lips. And, Don't look at my yeah, lips. Yeah, she's, she's constantly pointing and just throwing her hair around and her glasses like mine falling off of her face. And <laughs> it's, it's, and yeah, it was just frenetic. It was a mess. And I found uh, Sugar's to be much more, shall we say, sophisticated in that she was really selling it with her face and she wasn't doing a lot of drama, even though the song was about drama. <laughs> She she gave an adult performance, and Vanjie gave a 3.30 in the morning, and I've had several cocktails, and it's the last number I'm doing before going home performance. You think Pretty this is strong. setting up Sugar for a comeback in in um, All Stars? They won't bring her no, back. She doesn't, have a, she doesn't have a big enough personality. I don't think so, yeah. I don't know. They are though. bringing all the queens back next episode. Yeah, well, they're bringing it back to be made over, girl. They're not bringing them back to like keep them. Oh, we, we don't could. know. We I mean, know I don't yeah. think. Girl, I, how how upset would you be as a contestant if they were like, "Here's all the other bitches that went home. They could. Well, I mean, they've done it, but done that. Yeah, yeah, but if they don't like it. Don't go on the show because that show likes to fuck with everybody. Ask do Shangela. We think, do we think they'll <laughs> do that? Do we think maybe one of the 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 eliminated queens will stay. If, if, they were, if, they, if they were going to, I think they would have teased that in the promo. I yeah, agree. I mean, it is a makeover challenge, so. Could be that the, the eliminated queens vote on who wins or something like that, that episode. So past dramas could come up about oh. this or that, so. Oh, the, only other, the, the only other thing is there are too many queens coming back. They can't all be paired off. Because we've got what six left, but eight of eight are coming back. Yes, two we'll more. see. Uh, well, imagine two me trios. Two girls. Yeah. Girl, you've been sequestered <laughs> this whole time, and you don't get to participate in this challenge. So, girl, go back to your hotel room. So, unfortunately, then this week we did see Miss Sugar Cane leave, which I she did grow on me. I was sad about it, but it was her. I don't think it was her time, but apparently the producers did. So it was her time to leave, sadly. So that leaves us now with how many? We have, what, six girls left? Yeah. So we have the makeover challenge. We don't know what we have. And then it's our top four. So let's wrap this show up um, like we normally do. And let's throw out our top four. I think it's almost becoming pointless now because our top four has been... I don't think anyone had sugar cane in their top four. But let's go around one more time and see if anyone's opinions have changed apart from Russ. Russ, who are your top four now? I did have sugar in my top four, I think, at least two or three weeks. Um, it's Brooklyn's to lose at this point. Nina's doing well. Um, I, I, think, I think we're down to top twos now, not top fours. Okay, girl, she's still undecided. Um, Andrew, who are your top four out of the girls remaining still? Mine has changed, actually. I have never had Nina in mind, but I now think Nina's going to make it to the end. Um, Brooklyn as well. Um, Evie and Silky. Um, I was Team Akira for a while, but I think she's fading. Okay, okay, fair enough. I can see that. Michael, who are your top four? Brooklyn, Nina, Akira, Evie. Boom. And and by the way, just getting back a little bit to the magic show when they were when they were rehearsing, mm -hmm. and Silky was absolutely horrifying the magician who was teaching them by talking about the milk on the face and the, all those sexual references. I've renamed her. She's now Filthy Ganache. Yes. Appropriate. <laughs> Miss. Filthy nut Meg Ganache. <laughs> Filthy nut Meg Ganache. Ugh. Girl, just go home. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll see you on the road if I buy tickets to your show. Walter, who are your top four? Uh, I still think it's Evie's to lose. It's all going to come down to the lip syncs at the end. Uh, I don't think when it gets to the four, the final two lip syncs are going to be uh, Brooklyn and Evie. But... Um, so it'll be Evie's to lose, Brooklyn, Silky, and Nina. I think we're stuck with Silky to the end. I'm sort of like her pace. think you're right. Garrett, is Silky in your top four at all, friend? 
Um, my favorite, like Michael, is just Nina. I'm even looking at, you know, their promo pictures of all the queens. Every single queen in the, their promo photo is straight faced. And Nina's the only one that's smiling. And for me, the essence of a drag queen is somebody that when you go out, they're campy, they're funny, they make you feel good, they make you laugh. Um, I'm not so much like in love with the beauty queens or the people that look pretty. To me, it's about how do you make the crowd feel? How do you make the crowd feel like, for me, when I go out, it's about like going to church, you know? That's the place where a lot of gay people go to heal and to get sources of inspiration for, for life, just in general, because it could be hard. And to me, Nina is that person on this season. I think she would hold the crown, cherish the crown, and be the one that would go out and do good things and like be smart with her career, do really good shows. Um, not just shows in a bar, but like putting on real shows, like in, on Broadway or in Vegas. And so that's my number one for sure. I really hope Nina wins. Brooklyn after that. And then um, Silky would have like, a, I think a side show. And I think the producers are setting her up for like a cooking show or something that's more television based. I have heard, you know, Rue say of all the people on the show, they would like to have her have her own show. So I think those will be the top three for those reasons. Well, girl, that's yet to be seen. We'll see, we'll see how that goes, girl. I will not be tuning in. So, girl, good luck to you. My top four, I think I have to actually agree with Walter. I'm going to say it is Evie's to win slash lose. I think Brooklyn will come in second. And I think, unfortunately, we are stuck with Silky. And as much as I love Nina, I just don't see Nina in the top four. I see her doing really, really well. Um, I see her doing really well after the show. However, I just don't see her in the top four, unfortunately, because I would like to see her instead yeah. of Silky. Um, and I think we'll see a Curious still. I think she'll still stick around. That Davenport name is going to stick around. It'll be an opportunity for a Davenport to win. Why do you think they brought so many back this season? So, um, so I will leave that up to the viewers at home. Leave in the comments who you think your top four or who you would like to see in the top four, and we will see if you are correct. But until then, until our finale, we still have, what, four, five, five, four, four more episodes four. to go? So make sure you at home, you check out um, RuPaul's Drag Race every Thursday night. Check out Untucked After, because if you're not watching Untucked, you're only getting half the story. And then Friday morning, you make sure to check on us um, over at the Drag Queen database. It's what? Drag Queen. Say it, Andrew. You know on my heart. What, how can our viewers at home find us? Uh, you can go to our website, dragqueen.info, or on social media at dragqueendb. Girl, tag it. Tag it. Sound off. Let us know your thoughts. If you are a drag queen and you are trying to sell, I'm trying to sell eyelashes. If you have seen, check my page. You can buy those as well. Or you will go onto the Drag Queen database where I will have all that set up in the near, near future. Check us out there. But until then, we will catch you all next week. Enjoy your week, and we will see you all then. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. Bye.